All right, everybody. It is that time. Time for another episode of Ask Hunters for Life. Before we get into the great questions, uh, only have a couple of them this time, so this will be a rather quick video. We want to let you guys know how much we appreciate your support. We are, I think, last time I looked, like 20-something subscribers away from our next giveaway, our 770... Yeah, our 7,500 subscriber giveaway. So as a way to give back to you guys, uh, we added a bonus prize to that giveaway. That's uh, something we've never given away before, so that's going to be exciting for the one lucky winner of that prize. And then we will have a bunch of, uh, you know, T-shirts and probably throw in uh, a couple mystery tackle boxes and lucky tackle boxes and things of that nature. I haven't decided how many, uh, how many winners we're going to pick, probably like 10 to 20 like we normally do or something like that. But that's enough of that topic. Let's just get right into some questions. All right, but before we get started with the questions, just to let you guys know if you would like a shout out or uh, just want a question answered. We're definitely by no means professional fishermen, but we do know a little bit about uh, about fishing or hunting questions, social media questions, whatever kind of questions you guys want. Uh, we have a tendency to answer all of them, even though we have been getting some get some repeat questions, but uh, it's all good. So leave a question you want us to answer down in the comment box, and we will answer that in the next episode. <clears throat> oh, okay. Our buddy 319 Outdoors wants to know, what is our favorite pre-spawn fishing rig? And uh, honestly, uh, glad you asked. Because we love putting clips from our other videos into these uh, vlogs and Ask Hunters for Life episodes and things of that nature. So you don't have to just stare at my uh, beautiful face the whole time. But as far as best lure that we've found success with in the last couple of years, I don't think I have any up here currently. But just a skirted uh, flipping jig. We usually use like half to three quarter ounce because we're usually fishing rivers with a pretty strong current. So that heavier jig does a lot better stays in contact with the bottom a lot more than like a half ounce or three eighths or something like that and uh you can cast them a little further they sink down faster been finding success anything in the green pumpkin or watermelon variety with a uh a twin tail trailer like a like a craw trailer or a twin tail gary yamamoto or something like that and as far as the, co the color of the trailer this year did not really seem to matter as much as it did last year Last year, it seemed to be a green pumpkin jig or a watermelon jig with a green pumpkin or a watermelon trailer was like the only way to go. But we were finding out this year that uh, a uh, like a like a bluish or a blue or a green trailer with uh, like blue or purple, anything sparkly embedded into the trailer seemed to be the money maker. And then we also tried a new spot this year and uh, found some success with the jerk bait. So let's uh, let's uh, get some uh, B-roll in here and show you some of the bass we found this spring. Oh my god! Oh my god! That is a monster! Fish, bro. Good fish. Oh my gosh. Oh my god! He crushed it. Please be a smallmouth. Gotta be a smallmouth. Oh baby. Oh baby. There we go. Dude, that's a, at least a five pounder. That is a good trailer, like a blue with some little flakes. Gotta get back up there though. Oh my gosh. Don't hit me in the head this time. Oh, that's a That's bigger than mine. That's bigger than yours. That's a that's a that's a Oh, that's a fatty. That's man. the biggest smallmouth you ever caught, isn't that's it? That's probably is. <laughs> Finally found another one. Oh, he's getting heavy. Oh, he's getting mean. Nice net job. That's a, big one too. That's a good girl right there. Next cast after that last one. Got another one in the basket. Another good one. Oh, that's a dude. That's that's might be picture worthy. There we go. I knew he was up there too. One click, it should. You gotta be patient, it's got like a timer setting. Like some battery saver mode or something. I don't need a net for this one. Boat flipping three pounders. Oh yeah, dropped it right on his forehead. 
Good one. Maybe not a good one. Now it's recording. Oh yeah, the good one. Nice net, nice net, nice net. There he is. Oh my god, this is a good one. I think it's a good one. Oh yeah. Big old Oh, look at the reach on that one. That's a, that might be the biggest one of the day. I'll tell you that's a picture. Went right through its head. Like that. That's a picture worthy fish right there, brother. Fish on and low battery. You gotta do this quick. That's, that's the biggest one of the day, probably. Come on, eight pounder. Nice try. Oh, yeah, got one. Oh, yeah. Oh! Do you even say big one when they're all big ones? Got them. Good one. This is an old girl, probably right around it. This might be a little over six, actually. Oh my god, this is a beauty. God, that was a big girl. Alrighty, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's get into our next question. Outdoor hoser. Oh, just messed that up. Outdoor Hoser wants to know. I won't just let me zoom. There we go. Where are all the bass in Real Foot Lake? Went there in May. Didn't catch any. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I think there's a Real Foot Lake in Michigan, but uh, there's also I know there's a Real Foot Lake in uh, Tennessee. That's where my fear of snakes began. And as far as, I, I mean, I fished off a dock for like 10 minutes and didn't catch any bass. So as far as where they are, uh, honest to God, could not, could not tell you. You know, look for, look for, I guess still beds this time of year. Probably if, I mean, in that area, they might be done spawning, but weed edges are good. Drop-offs are good. Structure is always good. Timber along the shoreline, rocks, um, under docks. If the water's real warm, they'll be hiding under the docks cooling down but uh yeah sorry that i could not be more useful with that question thank you for asking though next one from our boy big o outdoors he actually just won our last giveaway congratulations my friend Ooh, where do you guys walleye fish <laughs> well of all of the species that swim around in uh in this great place we call michigan I'm fairly confident on catching all of them except walleye. <laughs> I think we've caught more walleye bass fishing than actually targeting walleye, short of our favorite lake, which is in Ishwaming, Michigan. And uh, it's actually, uh, there used to be a gold mine back in the day, and they used to just dump mercury into the water. So the water's safe, but the DNR's worried about the fish not being safe. So it's a catch and immediate release lake all year round. And uh, we, uh, needless to say, have 
I mean, we've probably caught over 5,000 walleye out of there and probably just just as many pike. And it's funny because the DNR also says that there's smallmouth bass in there, which we've never caught. But, yeah, we might as well show you some footage from that. Oh! <laughs> like, not a walleye, maybe. <laughs> That's the biggest one. I oh my gosh. That is a good walleye, brother. Go out there, dummy. Okay. You're not, yeah, you, there's a good chance you might not be jerking it, right? Just got another nice walleye on the next cast. This is a shit X wrap, I think, or something like that. I'll give it like three little pops. But the key is you want to bang it on slack line. So just a nice flick of the wrist. The key to jerking is it's all about the right wrist motion. <laughs> Got him. Three of them. There's four of them right there. Just keep them all up. Keep them all right there. That's ridiculous. I'm about to get one of them. I'm following him up to there. Little guy. Oh, yeah. Here comes a big one. I don't know, this is a good one. Chaos. That is a good walleye. Okay, this is a pretty good one. This is from our boy Parker Outdoors Moto and More. Do you or have you ever applied for bear or elk tags in Michigan? Uh, yes. I think every, I don't, I don't remember, I think I could start hunting for me. I was like 14 and then right when I turned 14, they changed it to 12 or something like that. Been applying for probably 10 years for, for bear and elk. I've gotten drawn twice for, uh, for bear and uh, sadly have not killed a bear yet in Michigan, but was lucky enough to get my first black bear in Arizona. Shout out to Sportsman's for Heroes Foundation for uh, for taking me out there. That was a blast. But yeah, I'll, I'll show you some of that. <laughs>
as uh, elk tags go, I've been applying for those for a while. My dad's been applying since they started doing it, which was probably like 100 years ago. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I haven't gotten picked yet. We do have a buddy that the first year they did it, he got drawn for a bull and an elk tag. But other than that, I think that's about the only uh, only person that we know that's actually gotten drawn for the elk. It's a pretty, I mean, a lot of people apply for them. They don't pick that many tags. But you better believe that uh, if we did get drawn, we would be doing our best to uh, kill an elk in Michigan. Because a lot of people probably don't even know there are elk in Michigan. In the future, though, I would like to go. Would like to go out west and uh, try and kill a you know three fifty plus bull. New Mexico's got them. Arizona's got them. California's, I think, even has them. Montana's got them. All those out west states with mountains, they seem to have. They seem to have elk. But thank you for that question. All righty, cruising along, cruising along. <clears throat> Our buddy, Phil Gooferly, how you doing, bro? You've been around for a while. Do you fish northern Wisconsin? If so, what are some of your favorite lakes? Whew, have not fished northern Wisconsin yet. Um, fish the Menominee River, which is like a legendary walleye spot, though we have not caught the, uh, the elusive 10-plus pound walleyes that we saw a ton of people catch. We did catch some walleyes, and we also caught a giant sturgeon. Might as well show you that. <laughs> that is a fish. Yeah, hey, really your lines in, boys. Yeah, I'm gonna stay behind you. That is definitely not a walleye. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger net. Yeah, run this boy down, dude. Don't let him get too much line. He's a shit. All right. He might, this might just be a giant waller, dude. There's no way. <laughs> what, there ain't no 40 inches in here? It's probably a crappie. Yeah, 45 minutes. We're going to be here for three hours. No. If it's a sturgeon, I bet it's about 36. 40? 36 to 40. Roughly, probably 20 to 27 and a quarter pounds. Hey, there's no head shakes. Don't get impatient with it. That was my problem. And that, that was running out of line. You yeah, definitely got a lot more line than my bluegill rod. That's unbelievable, dude. I'm gonna move to Menominee. I'm gonna move to What? Don't say that. Just don't even worry about it. Just don't even think about it. If it breaks, hey, if it breaks, it breaks. Don't even worry about it. If we can tail grab him and net him in the head, though, I think we'll be good. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Doctor, bring him in. Bring him in. Grab his tail. Grab his tail. Get him back in the water. Here, watch this rod. Here, take that out of the way. Yeah, we got. We'll hold his tail and let him. You got the tail. All right. This ain't even that big. That's that's a giant lake sturgeon, dude. As far as other places, we fished Lake Winnebago when they do their annual like sturgeon spearing deal and uh, hooked in. That was my first encounter with a sturgeon through the ice on a bluegill rod and I might as well show you a little bit of that. I don't I don't know what to do. this is a very large fish. This a, a, this is I don't know what this is. I bet it's a huge sheephead. I'm using a a bluegill lure. 
it just it's just heavy. He's going to be playing with this sucker for a while. I got a bluegill rod and a bluegill lure with a hook about this big. See, that might be a sturgeon. Got two of the most heavy duty fishing rods ever made right there, and I catch them on a bluegill well, of course, rod. But of course, he's still going down. My drag's tight, so I don't want to touch it. I wouldn't mess with anything. <laughs> I'll, I'll shake your hand in a second, eh? You're still taking it. It's a, it's a big fish. This is the only fish I catch all day. I'm I'm content. Oh, God. He think my yeah, son maybe I'll do that. Little camping on this. I got the white outside. Yeah, that's what he said. It's like sheep bed. You would have had it up by now. I can feel it. It's like he suction cuffs himself down to the bottom. And then I get his head up, 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 down. Oh, Gosh. I was right there. Oh my god, he's flying. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Look at that thing. See this? See the Oh my god. Are you pulling on the line in there, Pepper? That's his biggest run. Oh, that's it's unbelievable. <laughs> what have you got there, <laughs> Dude, hold that drag. Hold that drag. Oh God, look at this. Use your hand. Don't let it. Don't let it all go. That's a lot of fun. I can't tell. How much time you think you have left? No. Plenty. If I lose them, I'm going in that hole. What contest is that? Six. This is more than a 6 pound pit. <laughs> Pulling with much more than 6 pounds of power. I don't think we're ever going to see it. Oh my god. I have to drink now. This could take a while. I need to get the line back real bad. Maybe I had a really big fish and I had an even bigger one came by and ate it. If this is a sturgeon, the Haley Jig is by far the hands down the best fishing lure ever made. I think I'm gaining on him slowly. He's way, I mean, he's like 100 yards that way, I think. Is he really? Yeah. No, of course, he's not a chubby face staring at him. I'm really glad I put a lot of line on here, that's for sure. No, <laughs> I mean, either one of those, dude. I can tell your, van, I can tell your Jeep with those rods. But as far as the northern part of Wisconsin, we have not gotten there yet, but it is on our goal for this summer to hopefully tangle in with a muskie. And uh, everybody tells me that northern Wisconsin is where you go to catch trophy muskies and to potentially catch a lot of them. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that will get checked off the bucket list this summer. Okay. <laughs> What's up, Chandler? Chandler says that we should give away some bait casters. And that was the plan for this next giveaway. 
we were going to throw in a bait caster, but then I was at Gander and I, I, I throw a bait caster left-handed and it seems like they don't really have nearly as many left-handed bait casters as they do right-handed bait casters. So then I had a little epiphany that was like, okay, well, what if we buy one and then we give a right-handed bait caster to somebody who's left-handed or vice versa. So we decided for our first rod and reel giveaway that we were going to go with a spinning rod combo. That way, if you're left or right-handed and the reel is set the other way, you can switch the handle. Unfortunately, you can't switch the handle on a bait caster. So, uh, yep, next giveaway, which will probably be, so we got this and then we got our two-man limit of trout we caught in the middle of the night with the bow fishing lights that'll be the video you'll see tomorrow and then there'll be a vlog and who knows that might actually be that probably will be the 7500 subscriber giveaway and then we got a canoe trip planned so yep we're giving away a rod and reel and then i'm gonna have to feel i'm gonna feel like i have to beat that on the next giveaway so who knows for our 10,000 subscriber giveaway we'll have a bigger prize than a rod and reel combo don't know what it's going to be yet but uh we'll cross that bridge when we get there Okay, our boy Colton Leach, what's your favorite bait to use in spring and color? I think that was fairly, fairly covered with our uh, with our last bass question, the pre-spawn question. But uh, the green, green pumpkin and watermelon are two of, I mean, they're two incredible colors. And if you're fishing Great Lakes, the goby color is, uh, is pretty, pretty spectacular. It's funny, a lot of people are bashing on gobies, but... Uh, I, I, I personally think that the, the gobies being in the lake is the reason there's seven, eight, nine pound smallmouth being caught. It gives them uh, something else to munch on. But thanks for that question, buddy. What are some hot places to fish largemouth in Michigan? That's from our boy Swamp Donkey CO. Or Swamp, Swamp Donkey CO. Okay. Um, I, don't know, I grew up in Oakland County where there's like 450 lakes or something crazy like that. And it seemed like you could always go to any of those lakes and catch largemouth. As far as catching donkeys, I know Kensington or Kent Lake and Kensington Metro Park has giants in there. As far as up here in the UP, that's the funny thing about the Upper Peninsula compared to the Lower Peninsula. is downstate, you have to like seek out a lake to catch smallmouth. Up here, it's like the reverse. It seems like there's more lakes with smallmouth than largemouth. I don't know, any shallow, shallow lake with structure in Michigan is probably going to have bass. Some lakes are going to be better than others. Some lakes are going to have numbers but not size. Some lakes aren't going to have or aren't going to have numbers but they'll have size. So without knowing exactly where you are in Michigan, hard to uh, narrow the search down. But get out there, fish a lot, and uh, eventually you'll find uh, you'll find a good lake. All right, everybody. Well, uh, that's about all the questions we got for this episode. If you'd like us to answer a question, leave it down in the comment section. I know you all, all, all bleh, I know you all already have, but if you haven't, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you're feeling. We appreciate the heck out of you guys' support. It's crazy. I feel like it was like a week ago that I was doing the, the like 500 subscriber giveaway or 100 subscriber giveaway or whatever it was when we did our first one. <clears throat> now I think we're almost on like our 10th giveaway or something like that. So, uh. We're growing slow but steady, but we wouldn't be growing if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you for that. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, happy adventures.